Hello everyone, welcome to a new session on Pila Globosa. In this presentation, we'll be looking into the structure of uh, a stradium, one of the most important sense organ in the case of Pila. Um, a stradium, it is single in number, we are situated on the left side of the mantle cavity, uh, suspend, found suspended from the roof of the uh, cavity, usually uh, like uh, uh, found towards the uh, close to the entrance of the left nuchal lobe. Okay, so ostradium, it is uh, present on the left side of the mantle cavity, closer to the left nuchal lobe, right? And uh, it is uh, uh, like suspended from the roof of the mantle cavity. Okay, so what is actually the ostradium? Ostradium is a chemoreceptor, okay, or, or we can say it is an olfactory organ. And uh, uh, it is, you can see it is almost like over in shape ovoid in nature to small elongated and uh, uh, the medially this is the uh, ostradium and this part is the mantle okay so this part you can see it is broader in the center or in the middle and uh, its inner end it is bluntly rounded while the outer one is almost pointed okay uh, it is bipectinate uh, avoid elongated uh, at the same time it is bipectinate right uh, having 22 to 28 thick fleshy uh, roughly triangular leaflets or what are known as the lamellae they are arranged bi serially on either side uh, sides of a median axis or what we call as a central axis okay so you can you can see that the ostradium it is a, um, bipectinate structure and uh, it has bi serially arranged leaflets or lamellae around or along the either sides of median central axis. Okay, now when you speak about the leaflets or the lamellae, uh, the leaflets are larger in the middle, uh, and each leaflet it is attached to the mantle wall. You can see over here, right. Uh, and it is attached to the uh, mantle wall by its broad base uh, to the central axis by its smaller side. Okay, the smaller it is inner side, right? Uh, its outer longer side it remains free. So the ostradium it is uh, uh, supplied with nerves from the left pleural ganglia. Now this figure on the right side it shows the transverse section of ostradium. Uh, in the transverse section, we can see that the ostradium, it consists of an outermost layer, a single, it is uh, formed of a single layered epithelium. Here you can see, and the cells which form the epithelium, it can be differentiated into three or it can be grouped into three. Here you can see all the, from over here, you can see the epithelium, it is provided with cilia. Yeah. So the, there are three different types of cells that make up the outermost epithelial covering, the ciliated epithelial cells, and then the sensory cells. And among the sensory cells, you can see the glandular cells. So three, cell, three types of cells are there, ciliated, sensory, as well as granular. Now, when you speak about the ciliated, you can see it is uh, towards the those parts of the, uh, what you call the ostradium, which uh, line the attached margin okay ciliated epithelial cells are found along the um, part of the estradium which are which is uh, having the attached margin okay while sensory cells you can see the glandular cells and sensory cells they are devoid of cilia uh, the sensory cells they you can see here majority major part of this uh, uh, epithelium it is formed of sensory cells and then the glandular cells in between the sensory cells they are um, you can see over here right they are slightly different from the sensory cells they are flask shaped and are scattered among the sensory cells okay you can see here these are the um, glandular cells okay fine now the ostradium as we already mentioned it hangs like a, a curtain uh, from the roof of the uh, mantle cavity 
uh, and it hangs into the path of the respiratory water current that is the water which enters inside through the left nuchal lobe into the mantle cavity so on its path on its uh, on the path of the water current the ostradium it hangs down from the roof of the mantle cavity and here it functions as an olfactory organ or a chemoreceptor okay so it uh, functions uh, what what is its function actually so it what it does is it tests the chemical nature of the water entering the man mantle cavity or we can say it is the inspiratory water current okay so when water is uh, contaminated or uh, it is not uh, favorable to the animal the entry of the water into the mantle cavity it is completely prevented by the closure of the left nuchal lobe okay so the left nuchal lobe is completely closed so that the water contaminated water doesn't enter into the mantle cavity okay this is done with the help of the chemoreceptor ostradium okay uh, along with this uh, it also helps in the selection of food material because the food uh, uh, it, it can discriminate the food materials uh, in food selection okay so that also uh, become a part of the function of the ostradium so ostradium structurally it is a uh, you can see here it is ovoid it is attached to the mantle cavity it hangs down from the roof of the mantle cavity at the entrance uh, closer to the left nuchal loop and the functions being two that is first one to test the chemical nature of the water entering into the mantle cavity through the nu left nuchal loop and preventing foul water or uh, contaminated water entering the mantle cavity secondly it can also discriminate food materials in the food selection okay helps in discriminating food materials okay so these two are the main major functions of uh, ostradium uh, fine okay thank you